Hello, and welcome to Drug Era Talk. Uh, I'm Matt Hamilton. Today we're talking about Prevacid. Uh, I'm a drug error uh, lawyer uh, specializing in trials, and we will be discussing how Prevacid works on the human body, the mistakes that can be made, and how those errors can create serious consequences for the persons. And if you're facing it, what should you do? I'm joined today by Dr. Jesse Garcia. Welcome, Dr. Garcia. How are you doing, man? Uh, what does Prevacid do in the human body? Uh, Prevacid is in a class of drugs called proton pump inhibitors. Basically, uh, what they do is they will shut down the acid pumps that you have in the stomach that you typically use to break down food. They'll shut those down um, so that you don't produce as much acid. I see. And what sort of conditions would somebody be t need if they had Prevacid in their system? If they, were, if they were prescribed Prevacid, you typically want, you'd see a patient who either had some type of ulceration or heartburn is typically what we see. Is there a generic version of Prevacid? Uh, Prevacid is called Lansoprazole. It is available over the counter and by prescription. I see. Can errors be made in Prevacid? Uh, yeah, you can, you can definitely see errors with Prevacid. Uh, typically, what we see as, as part of uh, the most common one is it's improper usage whether it be the patient is either misinformed by the clinician or they uh, you know, fail to read the medication and just think, okay, well, if I have a, you know, acid reflux or if I'm having a symptom, then I just take the, the, the capsule, which okay. is definitely not the case. The intended use is to use it 30, at a minimum of 30 minutes up to 60 minutes prior to your first meal. So don't, eat, don't take it before you, uh, at the meal? No. If you think about it like this, you want to shut off the pumps uh, and then eat, okay? Because otherwise, it's like uh, the idea would be the pump's already spraying out acid and then you're trying to shut it off. You have food in your stomach, the body's going to be producing acid, and now you're trying to shut it off. Okay. It's a lot easier to keep it off than try to shut it off okay. after it's already been activated. How long before a meal, uh, at least, should they uh, take the Prevacid? Uh, about about 30, 30 minutes at minimum and then up to one full hour if need be. Okay, all right. Um, can they take it after the meal? Uh, you don't want to really do that because uh, then you're kind of already fighting a losing battle. I see. Are there any issues, uh, say, with Prevacid with children? Uh, Prevacid is one that can be compounded. So what we typically would see is either it's misdosed by the doctor, uh, either too high, too low, or when the pharmacy is making it up, uh, in, in the compound, uh, it's not done correctly. I see. Okay. Children are at particular uh, susceptibility with, to compounding errors when they mix it, and you should take it at least 30 minutes before you eat. Correct. Especially compounding errors. I mean, errors can happen with adults, but when you see an error within a child, especially in a compounding because it's being mixed in a short term, I mean, you've got big controlled environment when, the, when, the, when, when you have liquids that are being mixed um, by the drug companies themselves. But when individual pharmacies are mixing it, uh, you know, whether it be non-sterile conditions or they just, you know, instead of putting uh, two grams, they put four grams or you know, vice versa. I see. Is there a maximum amount of time you, can, you should take Prevacid? The, the intended use for um, Prevacid is to use it for, you know, two weeks at a time, maybe a month at most. Okay. My recommendation is no more than three months. And that's just typically what you see is uh, then it becomes a maintenance issue where the drug's being used as a maintenance drug in lieu of to treat a, a symptom or a problem that you're having right now. And uh, that's, that's what we have started to see trending is it being used as a, a maintenance drug instead of figuring out what the actual issue is. Is it an issue with diet? Is it the meals are too large? Is it uh, too much coffee? Is it too much acidic food? So if somebody's advising you to take it for longer than 90 days, that can create some real consequences. It, can, it definitely can create some consequences for you. Uh, in the case of these proton pump inhibitors, there was a class-wide uh, notification that went out in 2016 regarding its use and its effect um, uh, on the body in terms of uh, increased susceptibility to C. diff, which is an infection that can overtake the stomach untreated can lead to a condition called toxic megacolon. Well, what can toxic megacolon, what are the consequences from that? How bad can it get? Uh, it pretty much, uh, to, I guess the easiest way to explain it is uh, uh, deterioration of your colon. 
if you ever want to see some interesting pictures, you might you might Google that. That's and it's pretty rough stuff. Interesting as in bad. Interesting as in bad. Okay. Well, um, are there any uh, errors that can be made with drug interactions with uh, prep? Sure, sure. Um, most every drug out there has some known drug interactions. We try to keep those limited, uh, whether it be um, direct to direct interaction, meaning you can't use drug A with drug B. Okay. But what we see with this, uh, with these uh, medications is some kind of indirect drug interactions. So if you think about it, whenever you're doing drug design or you're doing testing, very controlled environment, they know the specific pH or acidity level of the stomach. And so when the drug hits the stomach, in some cases they use that um, acidity level to activate the drug or um, maybe that might be its active form already in that environment. And if you change the level of acidity, you can change the functionality, meaning either the drug works better or it doesn't work as well. And okay. so that's a real key um, that we see because you can affect uh, even such you know, uh, uh, vitamins, for instance. Calcium levels can be affected. Uh, the absorption levels of calcium can be affected whether or not it's in an acidic environment. Okay. And so we see that in a higher acidity environment, uh, we will see more absorption of calcium. So if you have a patient on a long-term use or long-term maintenance, several years, they're going to not be able to absorb calcium as well because the uh, acidity level is lowered. Okay. Right? So that puts them at more risk for you know, uh, things like fractures, hip fractures, uh, and such. So we've learned about how the risk of hip fractures and other osteoporosis-related things can be a consequence of a drug error with Prevacid. We've learned about how serious the infection of C. diff is with a drug error from Prevacid. Steven Johnson's syndrome, what is that? Steven Johnson's uh, syndrome is uh, a skin condition uh, that is, is very, very detrimental. Uh, it's basically a condition where um, the skin uh, almost sloughs off. So your skin is used to protect warmth, uh, keeps you from, away from infections, so you lose some of that, and that can be... Uh, locally in one small area, or if it's a really bad Steven Johnson's case, you can see it, um, you know, basically over the entire body. Steven Johnson's can kill you. Absolutely. Okay. What sort of, if you're taking these drugs and there's been an error and you're seeing these symptoms, how might you know about Steven Johnson's syndrome? Well, I mean, you're going to be, you're going to be looking at, uh, you know, kind of skin, skin infections, uh, you know, you, you, might, you might not even notice it in some cases. So you'll be wanting to watch for that. Um, the other thing that you want to watch with, uh, with some of these medications is, you know, they might present themselves almost as lupus-like um, uh, symptoms, basically. Like so, blood in your urine or something. Well, that would be more, you're looking at blood and urine for uh, kidney infections or, or something called interstitial nephritis, which is, uh, so, uh, which is a side effect of some of these medications. That can, is, is, is a the different. kidney problem a Prevacid consequence? Uh, it can be. Okay. In, mo in, most, in most of these uh, cases, it's actually class-wide. Uh, they, can be, they can become problematic. Uh, you've got to think all those minerals, all those uh, vitamins are all passing through the kidneys. So essentially what can wind up happening is those, those tubules... Um, based on acidity level and what's going through them, can become inflamed, if untreated, can lead to kidney, kidney, um, uh, chronic kidney disease, eventually into ESRD, which is basically end-stage renal disease. Untreated, obviously. Well, you were talking about lupus. What sort of symptoms uh, would be a lupus consequence? You could see lupus um, or lupus-like symptoms, which would be like red patches. So that's why you want to be very careful when you use medications like lentoprazole, um, so you're looking for uh, basically skin changes. I see. Well, if somebody's seeing one of these or they're just concerned about it because they're taking Prevacid, what should they do? Well, this is a case whenever you're talking about uh, stability of the skin, you're talking about kidney, uh, which is you know, obviously we clear a lot of drugs through the kidney, we use it for uh, absorption of minerals, that those are conditions, or, or C. diff for that matter, are conditions that need to be treated now. This is not a wait and see type situation. You need to get in, you need to get seen, you need to be evaluated immediately. Okay, so it's not about making an appointment with your doctor a month no. later. You want to get in 
within 24 hours or less, right away, sooner than later. Okay. Well, Dr. Garcia, it's been a pleasure talking with you. Uh, if you want to learn more about Prevacid and other drug errors in, in doing your research or hear links, you can go to our website. It's worldwideweb.law-kc.com. And also check out our YouTube channel for additional videos. This is Drug Error Talk. I'm Matt Hamilton. I'm here with Dr. Jesse Garcia. Dr. Garcia, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.